This episode of Ultimate Counter Guide is brought to you by mstmerch.com. Check out our latest drop of the soft fiber version of our tournament playmat with a very limited quantity. You guys are going to get your hands on this one real quick. And don't forget to check out all the other sleeve options available at mstmerch.com. Thank you guys for checking out. Thank you, Patreons, for supporting the channel. And let's begin. Hey guys, this is John Box, and welcome to part three. If you yep. skipped part one, what oh, are you no. doing? What are you doing? You skip part two. What are you doing? Go check out those two parts. And of course, we have with us one of the best players in the game right now. That are also recently topped of YCS. <laughs> appreciate, it, appreciate. It. What's up, guys? It's Pack here. Um, excited to be here for part three now, um, covering Ghost second cards um, in this format. So yeah, should be interesting. Um, I think going second is really tough in this meta. So let's see what cards we have to combat. You know the boards that people are making yeah this is gonna be a hard one you just won the game one and you want to close out the match as soon as you can it isn't the easiest thing to do for this format i would say so mm -hmm. just be careful because lots of these decks like if you look across the top if you haven't seen part one and two if you look at this particular ultimate counter guide it's a little bit different in the sense that we're not covering specific decks in their interaction but we are looking at, say, the engines that they run because there's a lot of overlaps due to those engines. And yeah, you know what? Long story short, we've done this intro like twice already. So if you haven't heard this before, well, there it is. And this time across the side in terms of our matchups, uh, we have uh, Regeki, evenly matched, Forbidden Droplet slash Chalice. We have Cosmic Cyclone and Twin Twister. And we also have DD Crow and Token Collector as additional hand traps to add to here. Like, they're not the most commonly, uh, I would say, uh, main deck to, uh, hand traps. I've seen DD Crow in the main deck because DD Crow is just in general a very powerful hand trap. Uh, and sorry for the little buzzing noise, guys. It's just uh, there's someone uh, like turning on some electronics there. Uh, but anyways, that's that's what we have for you know the cards to to try to play going second. I've seen these in a lot of YCS uh, deck lists, and across the top we have our matchups. We have adventure, not matchups, engines. Adventure Engine, Punk Engine, DPE Scythe, Hulk, Rose, Mecha, Phantom Beast, Aurora Dawn, and the only thing that's a truly a matchup here it is going to be Sword Soul. And like last time, like our previous videos, we're going to go down this list by going down, we're going to go column to column to see how they fare in each of these. <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Adventure Package. So we have the Adventure Package and how our Geki trades. I think like our Geki trades fine. It one for one is the Griffin. Um... But, you know, obviously you need more cards to substantiate to break the rest of their board. Um, but I would say, like, for a Geki, it's, like, okay. I feel like it's this. It's, like, this alone. Yeah. But then yeah. it becomes a really good card if you have a second card to go with it. Yeah, it's only really good if you don't get Scythe Lock, if that makes sense. That's why, like, Rageki is fine, but it's, like, only if you don't get Scythe Lock, because then Rageki doesn't do anything. <laughs> don't get so. sight. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like it won, it won for ones the Griffin, yeah. which is actually decent. It, it's decent. Yep. Because like is. once the Omni negates out of the way, you can begin to actually play your turn out and evenly match. Again, a lot of these cards, a lot of these going second cards, you're gonna have to plan and uh, you're gonna have to do this. All right. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're gonna yep. need something to go with it because they never really stand alone. Again, once this one resolves, you blow out the entire board if you use yeah, evenly matched. Yeah, because they have a token on the board. Yeah, yeah. like token oof, token oof, guys. That's uh, mm -hmm. it's brutal. It's it's not a board that you want to end with. Yep. Dro uh, forbidden droplet chest chalice. I think they're both pretty decent at trading um and you have the flexibility of droplet being used so i would say it's pretty good like yeah it's a solid choice it's either the griffin yeah. but remember this is only parts of parts of the engine so if there's like multiple omni negates you're gonna drop it obviously being better because you can perhaps turn off both and you can even force a bad trade mm -hmm. on their end by activating another card and sending that same card away into the graveyard so that's how you yep. trade uh beware of one thing though uh for droplet beware of herald Yes. Because that is going to uh, ruin your droplet. Because you can't... S like, there's a reason why the Kitchen Sink version, the base deck version of the Scythe Lock, 
being stronger than most of the other variants is because they do end their board on a Herald of Arclight, which prevents you from sending yep. a monster from your hand to the graveyard. So standby phase, uh, you're not going to be able to do anything. This actually came up in my locals recently where I told my opponent, no, you can't use Droplet because I have a Herald on the field. You can't use Valor. Yeah. Valor has a cost to send to the grave. That Herald of Arclight is, is ridiculously good now. It's like probably one yep. of the best cards in the game right now. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah, Droplet, these, these are just good trades. They're just good trades, yeah, as Pac said. Cosmic Cyclone and Twin Twister versus this particular package. Mm, it's not amazing. I think the thing is, uh, every Go second card that isn't like, well, it's usually trade one for one. So like, if for example, if they have a Scythe Lock, it'll probably trade one for one into the Griffin. Uh, but I mean, if you're going first with Cosmic into the you know, the Avenger token, it might be kind of nice, but strictly going second, I don't think these cards are that great, to be honest. Going second, for this particular uh, engine... Engine, yeah, it's not that great. But it, it's not that we're saying, yeah, you don't side it. <laughs> I mean, there's there's clearly other areas that we can look at. DD yep. Crow versus the Adventure stuff. This one's kind of, like, weak. Against Adventure It's directly. very weak. Yeah, it only comes up when, like, they play, a, like, I don't know. A way to put that card in the graveyard but there isn't that many so it's pretty weak it's not like they go like i guess against like pk they might summon out the the enchantress and you have a chance to actually uh use the dd mm -hmm. crow against it but i'm gonna ask this question if we're playing against pk i'm sure there's like a lot of better things to actually throw a crow on to get rid of it because yeah. uh they're gonna revive some pretty big players in their deck yep. and uh it's not gonna be very fun and they're gonna go way further even then they have levy air they're gonna revive whatever that you're gonna banish not sure yep. if that's the best bet here um mm -hmm. next uh against a uh, token collector <laughs> really good yeah yeah really sweet card <laughs> like goodbye it. token Turns off a, yep. a long line of plays. Of course, they don't get the Griffin. They don't get the uh, equip bounce. It's a lot of mm -hmm. stuff turned off. I think it's every part shut off. Yeah, and you also get a free body, right? So, like, we recognize how good Phantasmia was uh, back in 2019. And Token Collector being an extra body on your side of the field can help convert into... Um, it's an extra material into Anaconda. Uh, the DDD deck uses it to make uh, the rank 4 uh, Caesar. So, like, there's utility of it being a body that's also recursive. I oh, think yeah. that's what makes the card like really, really insane. I'm surprised that not as many people actually played it in the YCS. Yeah, I'm, I'm surprised. I was yeah. super surprised about that. Looking at like the side deck, like, oh, I don't need token collect. I'm like, that's like half the, that's like half the entire tournament that's like spamming yep. out these tokens. Like, what are you, what are you missing out on? But next, yeah, I agree. Yeah, next we have Punk Engine. Punk Engine being the E Telly to Z Zaman to mm -hmm. either going to Halk and Foxy Tune. There's just many ways to generate double tuner with this one. Uh, I would say like, I mean, right? Is it their end board? Into because, the, like, yeah, if you're talking about the end board, then Raigeki's kind of it's a one for one, so it's not amazing. Um, but if you're talking about like punk cards in general, then yeah, it's pretty good. Like if you're talking about pure punks, it's definitely very good because the pure punk deck tries to synchro summon on your turn. So being able to like right get them is really. Oh yeah, there's like no response timing for them because once they synchro out, you're gonna resolve the chain on the right geki. So it, yeah, it's exactly. good engine wise, kind of weird. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I guess read the board. Yep. This is a read the board moment. Uh, I think evenly match kind of goes in the same direction here if they have yeah, an omni even, even yeah the same impact as regaki it's the same yep droplet and chalice again these are about their end boards their end boards is the how play if you open with these that means they've yeah. gotten to their end board you're likely looking at a baron somewhere there there's probably a baron on mm -hmm. the field there could be a borlord savage there is one omni negate at least on here. They could even be a hero because yeah. because of uh, the way that they play. I think Droplet is like so weird because they also end on the, the Imperm trap. So it's like really hard to Droplet all your card advantage to stop all the Omnis. And they still have a Imperm set, you know? It, it's, it's really weird. hard to beat that. I, I kind of want to put a question mark here. Because it's really yeah. hard to see where the board ends when it comes to this yeah. stuff. I mean, if you went second, that means they either develop... And if it's developed, then how do we how do we justify this? Because 
like different decks use it differently. When it punks versus Sword Soul, yep. they've got Baron on the field. You, I mm. guess in that case it's good, uh, but they've used punk stuff for the uh, base deck. It's not so good. You're only trading one yep. for one. So I don't know. It, it, it's it's a it's really a mixed bag this time. I kind of just yeah. want to throw everything in here because it's like matchup dependent. Yeah, I hear that. Uh, Cosmic Cyclone Twin Twister, it does nothing. <laughs> they don't nothing. Have, they don't have anything there. DD Crow, I don't think it does it's anything. It's good in Despot. <laughs> oh, that's it. oh, no, 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 no. Yeah, that's actually pretty decent. Yeah. The Despot will cut off the Synchro play following up. If yeah, they would, didn't... Yeah. yeah, actually, I don't think they actually have anything here. No, this is this mm -hmm. is actually pretty decent. Because it doesn't give them a follow-up. Yep. And, and they're also locked out of the links, so... Uh, I guess I get that this is like Hulk Aurorodon, but we'll just we'll just have the overlap. Token collector. Yeah. This is. Uh, I would say it's good because it's because the punk engine is designed to go into Hulk. Yeah. So like it, it has to be good into the punk cards. Yeah. This is just Aurorodon stuff. Yeah, Aurorodon. Yeah. Okay. Next lineup. Scythe DPE. Okay, we just put an X right here because it's really bad yep. against Very that good. engine. He, okay, he does nothing. Even the match also kind of does nothing. Yeah, because like it's, it depends. You, yeah. it's, it's it's. I think it's this, kind of. Yeah. It's really weird. You take a lot of their advantage though, um, but usually they just pop DPE in itself to recur. So like, even the match never trades that well, then you get to keep one card still. It's, um, there's, a so it's like, okay. there's a funny interaction. There's a funny interaction though. I think there's one funny interaction. It's because you activate this and then you ogre their TPE, because <laughs> because yep. then they'll they'll be forced to they keep a card, right? Mm -hmm. I guess they still keep the same card that they want though. But they they lose their DPE for sure. But the DPE is gonna activate. Yeah, it's kind of iffy. Yep. I was I was hoping there would be one interaction where like there, you can somehow. No, I don't think it. No, the lineup doesn't work. I, I was thinking like, oh, what if you like ogre them and then you use evenly, but it, that that chain doesn't work. Because that'd be funny. Because right. they they would have to pop the last card that they leave behind. Yeah, that would be hilarious though. But that's uh, that's not the case. No, this one is this one's like iffy. Or even bad. Super perhaps. iffy. It's actually kind of bad. <laughs> uh, droplet. Droplet's great. Yep. I think droplet's really good. Yeah, it keeps the body on the board so that you can like spin it back or something like. Uh, if you shoot it or something later, so I think uh, dropping the DP is kind of nice. Yeah, and also scythe. You can also get like you can prevent the scythe being popped out. Uh, you can even negate the scythe if they're trying to summon it with Baron. Uh, there's yeah. there's a lot that you can do with the droplet and chalice, and ch specifically droplet and chalice here. Imperm's not going to work as well because what if they waited? If they waited, then you're going to commit into something that is going to skip your turn. So. Chalice, yeah. you, Chalice and Droplet both offer you the most flexible timing on when you can use it, and you can usually win the interaction in that case. Okay, Cosmic Cyclone Twin Twister. Cosmic's good on Scythe. But it, it usually um, needs a pair, but, though. Yeah, it needs a pair usually, but I think the rest of the other cards aren't really that good. Yeah, it's just Cosmic on Scythe. Yep. It's kind of like DD Crow. Yep. Yeah, there's not there's nothing really else there. And DD Crow, DD Crow is kind of also for Scythe. Again, it's like you because we're expecting that there's going to be some level of Omni Negate whenever it happens. Mm -hmm. I don't think people would go directly yep. to any more into the play unless they got like hand trapped to the ground on the earlier turn, but they may manage yep. to do the follow-up and do Scythe DPE. In this in that particular case, your hand size is usually maybe around Three, two to four cards because you've traded away two hand traps for that yes. for, for that board to even occur so yes that crow would be maybe your third card third hand trap then yeah that then it's really good because then you already preemptively countered it whereas if you didn't preemptively yep. counter you're gonna need all those cards on that one turn right away so yeah there <laughs> yep that counts for this one Every Collector does nothing. That's an easy X. 
I'm tired of it. I'm gonna stop them, man. Somehow, some way. Right, Geki versus the end board of Hulk Rose combo. How do they really end now? Oh, it's it's so broken. Like they <laughs> end on Baron, Baron, Harold, Scythe Lock with DP. I don't think this yeah, does that, enough. I mean, it's a one for one trick. No, it's a one hand's broken enough. Yeah. It's it's, it's kind of it's too slow because. You have to go to main phase to do this. A lot of the interaction mm -hmm. is going to probably happen during the standby phase, which means it's yeah. not even doing the one for one trade. Mm -hmm. But it does offer you a little bit of board clearance if you bait in the gate. But you're still under sight yes. blocks. Yes. Uh, this this is this is uh, uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. It's just there's not enough value. I mean, if you have it, you're not too sad seeing it. Mm-hmm. Bit of I think it's like okay. It's like not amazing. Like it, it just trades one for one. But most of the time, you're you're still gonna like probably lose, right? Yeah. Like because it's not a card you yeah. want to see. Yeah. No, it's not, not the card that you would s willingly, s logically side. I think. Yeah, this is kind of weird. This one, yeah. like Hanko sided three of these. I looked. I looked into his his side deck. He's like, yeah, I sided three of these. If I'm gonna crack a board, well, th it's different because if your deck is naturally already immune to scythe, then having two Raigeki mm -hmm. is like really good because that scythe it yep. does doesn't do anything, and you get a f double board wipe. In that particular case, yes, Raigeki is good. But again, this one is like a more deck dependent on how you use it, like. Just because yeah. it's good for one deck doesn't mean it's good for you. So this one's also like deck dependent. Yeah, I I don't want to completely rule out all scenarios for like where Raigeki is kind of a a dud, but you can use it if you're immune to Scythe already. Then it's a it, it trades even better. Yep, I agreed. Agreed. Evenly matched. Uh, same boat as Raigeki. To be quite honest, I think it. Yeah, it should be exactly the same. There's just basically board breakers that trades one for one because there's always an Omni. So mm -hmm. I would say it's the same thing. Um, for droplets, I would say that it's a pretty. Actually, I was gonna say it's bad because they make Harold of Arclight. But they also have Chalice. Pretty... There's also Chalice as well in, in this. Oh, in this Chalice thing. is Chalice would fall in the same boat as Evenly or Regeki. Um, drop. Blitz would be pretty bad, yeah. Yeah. It's so deck dependent, weird. yeah. It's so weird. Like how boards you yeah, usually get their killed their by droplet. Is, yeah, the yeah, their end board is like really broken. That's what that's why you'll see a lot of these cards not good. And it's like basically alluding to like the theory I had when I played the YCS where I wanted to play like infinite hand traps because these cards are just not great into the matchup at all. Unfortunately. Would you like what kind of deck would you recommend? I I know we're like kinda like we're almost done here, but what kind mm -hmm. of deck would you recommend like would you prefer like one card combo decks set five back row kind of deck? i would one no I, I would recommend like a deck that can play at least um a 12 non-engine or like a, an amount of non-engine cards hand trap wise that will give you a good probability to see two while being substantiated by an engine that is you know pretty flexible um so like for example like either a prank kid deck um is a good example because it can play a lot of non-engine its engine is very like uh it's good enough to stand alone on its own um so when it does hand trap the opponent it can capitalize on that fact um but you know okay so i, I would say those type of decks because um not only do you need to hand trap your deck you need to assistant deck to back up um you losing two cards out of your hand to stop playing the game mm -hmm. right and there's not a lot of decks that can do that in the meta but I think Prank is definitely up there with them because it's a one card combo deck um, that can play multiple non engine and then it has the Brave Engine to support its plays. Um, it's very consistent because there's only, it only tell, all it takes is one Prank Kid monster to resolve. So, mm. All right. So just keep that in mind in terms of like when you're going to be making yep. your deck choices, everybody. It's not, it is like a format where the hand trap ratio is very yep. different from the past. I think the pass was about 9 per 40. Yep. Yeah, it was about 9 per 40, and like about 15 mm -hmm. if you're going to go into the 60. But now we've hit a point where in a 40 card deck, you want 12 hand traps because you're, everyone's talking mm -hmm. about that 50% chance of opening two hand traps just so that yes. you're able to play. And you've even seen yep. 48 card decks playing about 
12 15. or 15 hand traps uh, i'm sorry yep. 15 hand traps and you also get mm -hmm. like 60 card decks playing 18 hand traps in their yes. deck it is a ridiculous yes. amount because they want that ratio that is the ratio to play everyone's kind of talking about it if you guys don't know where it's coming from it's because of the boards being established the adventure package definitely has a huge influence of why that is happening yep. because it is a right. one card plus four or plus right plus, about plus three and it, it's just ridiculous when it gets to it so cosmic cyclone twin twister versus this end board okay it does nothing because it's mainly just monsters being built dd crow um i think it's like not good either because like uh you like you think that they would go for a death ball play but most of the time when they use fiber effect it's almost always summoning red rose so like it's actually not the death spot they only do death spot when like the board's empty uh yeah when they like, have no other plays but yeah i would say like honestly it's not really that good no that's fair collector's uh, really good though collector Next card. Is, I, think, uh, I think that card's really nice working with, yeah because it also hits all the aurora dawn stuff it also hits mm -hmm. the stuff leading into it it also makes the plays a lot safer because of the adventure stuff yep. it's also pretty decent sword soul wise yep. regeki regeki's a pretty decent trade oh regeki's pretty good in this matchup yeah like they don't <laughs> make that many omnis so regeki is usually really good i think the best way to put um, it is this because it's probably the baron beware of chen ying though chen ying is going yeah. to like screw you over if you try to regeki it got to clear it first it will it will kill you yep. uh chen ying is I think, like, powerful some people also opt to not make baron they make the new synchro 10 so like it actually does lose to regeki so it depends on what 10 they make to be quite honest like it just depends okay best. but i would say regeki trades in the monsters pretty well the 10 star check <laughs> yep and i would say like the same philosophy applies for evilly match here um because yep. they're literally the same card um except that one banishes and you know and right so it depends if they have the omni or not okay if you, or if you can bait the omni right? chalice is but regeki always baits the omni so yeah yep chalice is good both yeah, really challenge jobs are good usually. Just yeah, beware of the trap really card good. once you do get it off because they still have a two mm -hmm. monster pop. Just think about it for a second. Uh, back removal is actually okay. I don't think it's too bad. I mean, you get to remove the Not trap the worst, card. Yeah. Uh, it's like pretty average. It's average. It's like nice. The, it's not the like bad. It's not bad. Yeah, like it, the issue with Sword Soul, like why it's so tough to crack, is because it has a front end with the monsters and then the back end. Um, with like all the traps like so like you know it's not if you clear the back row you still have to deal with the front end and that's why it's because it's dual in its like approach mm -hmm. when it sets up a board it's really really tough hard to crack and that's a theme that we've seen in Yu-Gi-Oh! like ddd's has a trap and then they also have like a monster interruption yep like sorso has a trap and then have monster interruptions like the punk cards are very similar in that aspect as well right. um so it's we're, we're seeing themes here we're like yeah modern you know, Yu-Gi-Oh! don't no. put all their eggs in one basket exactly yeah. <laughs> okay so dd crow i would say this is the opportunity for you to get rid of that death bottle one uh yeah death bottle one <laughs> is really good usually but if they just do standard torso plays without fibrax then it's really bad right so it's a very weird scenario here to be quite honest with you i guess it's like ten, um, it's, it's 10 yin line it's like it's a uh, yeah line, like if line, they do line. if they do standard plays like you're probably not getting any value if they go tau or 10 yin line you might be able to catch them because mm -hmm. if they're really yeah. trying for um if they start off with say the ashuna if they want yeah. the Ashina to go off, then we we're probably talking about the Ten Yi stuff also. Yeah, it, it's it's it's, it's a little predictable because whenever they start off their play, they go like they'll activate their first monster, uh, summon yeah. it onto the field, turn it into monk, a monk, and then they either activate vessel or there's already an Ashina there. You could try to actually crow away those cards so that they have less follow up. Uh, mm -hmm be very careful on if they just immediately just dr jump into adhara because if they go immediately into adhara that's the biggest tell that they're going into how play on yeah. the first summon because there's actually been like a, a specific line people are people have been saying like you should just try to do the chow feng lock first 
If that doesn't yeah. work, then you go for the Hulk play because they've already committed into stopping yeah. that other line. So the Hulk play is more likely to go through. And yep. it's kind of like just layering, forcing direction. Because if someone gets locked behind Chao Feng, that means they can't even use anything for the most part. It, it, it sucks. Yep. Um, but I don't even think that the Chao Feng line is even that great right now because of the uh, adventure Chaofeng package. Optimal. Yeah, most <laughs> people will opt to go for the Fibrax line because it puts up the most amount of interruption while giving you card advantage in the process. When you do the Chao Feng line, you actually commit a lot of resources to do it. I, I feel, so. yeah, I feel like that one is a little bit hurt because it's like. Mm. Like, if it wasn't an adventure package, I wouldn't mind seeing it a bit more because we'll probably see a lot more light attribute. But the fact that the adventure yep. package is not light based and comes with the Draco back, the Draco back bounce on the Chao Feng is uh, gonna kill you. You committed a lot of cards, you committed a synchro and another tuner onto that without mm. getting a tuner back in return. That yep. that cuts off a lot. Uh, token collector, yep. that's great. <laughs> yeah, token collector is like obviously a really good card. Um, yeah. they, their whole deck revolves around making tokens. Yeah. Like, uh, especially when they don't play, like, no one's playing Instant Fusion to get out a free card uh, to, to extend these days. So yep. you're mm -hmm. not going to really be dealing with very much after that. Like, you have to either hard open double Tenyi, and even if you're double Tenyi, one of them has to be an Ashina to spit out the spit out the additional monster. So yeah. Or they have Adhar plus one, and they go Adhar, like, summon the seven, summon the one, and then go into it. it it's not the easiest thing to do. Like, those guys are opening are like, Kinda, it's not, un, it's not like rare, but it's not exactly the most common thing either because it's not the best line yep. to start with. Well, yep. that actually covers all of our going second matchups of, the, of these interactions, guys. Just the hardest part about this particular cheat sheet is that you can't just look at this and be like, yeah, I got this down because you kind of want to stack it on top of each other to see where mm -hmm. things actually hit this time. And that's yeah. why it's a lot harder to choose how you use your hand traps. You gotta know your own deck really, really well. I think this format, because decks are so similar, don't you think that it's more about how the players kind of manage uh, their own deck now and know what they yeah. can do and what they should stop? I think like deck building plays a big role, uh, this format, because every deck accomplishes to do the same thing. So it's like, how do you build around the format? Um, and make the right deck choices um, and card choices to, to play around the format. I think that's like, it's even less on technical play because quite frankly, a lot of these combos are quite like easy. They're qu pretty linear, to and be they're, honest. And they're like, kind of unstoppable too. Like, yeah, like it doesn't really take much practice in order to like scythe, you know, you know scythe block people with DPE, quite honestly. Um, so at that point, what you need to like, kind of like work on is how do you build your decks to beat the people who are trying to like do this, um, me method, um, and quite a lot of people are because of how easy it is to like, like, you know, it doesn't take much skill to activate rights and put a token up, you know, like, and then just make Fibrax. Um, that's so, such a hard combo, man. How do I, how yeah, do I activate this exactly. one spell yeah, card? <laughs> so that's why like a lot of the, a lot of your success in the format would literally be, um, It'll probably devolve to like how well you build your deck to beat all the people who are planning to do all these things and you know the card choices you make and that's why like i think this guy is kind of cool because like we're clearly seeing some cards that are really bad and you know instead of just listing all the good cards you get to see like why certain cards are bad why certain cards are good um it's good mix so yeah th that's my two cents on it yeah like i, I think um evaluate the format and and, and, and double check like what you're playing in your main deck you know what you're playing in your side deck and then saying like why why is it there right um and asking yourself that question before just putting it in yeah um it, so yeah uh, i really wish there was a more clear-cut way of showcasing you know how to hit each deck but there really isn't like a 60 card deck that runs like basically everything here uh, how do you hit yeah. something like that like oh we'll be talking about that one deck forever so since it's very similar like there's a there's a joke running in in, in the community saying you know what the kitchen sink is literally just every deck but only the best parts <laughs> yeah pretty much <laughs> yeah that's literally what it is um it takes all the engines and then the logic is that you play six to your uh bricks less yeah. um but it's so ironic because if you actually do the math on it you actually don't see your bricks less by adding more cards um <laughs> you actually, like it's actually the same like so um the same amount of like because the thing is the 60 card decks have about like they add in like seven garnets um and you know 
Like that's the same amount as running three gardens in 40. It's like, like you're not add like adding more gardens and playing more cards doesn't actually make us receive gardens less. Like that's I think the myth <laughs> of playing more cards is is that um you know it's the same thing for like sometimes people play like um they play like two gardens in a 40 card deck and they're like yeah I'm I'm playing 45 so I see my gardens less. And then when you start running the math, the percentage decreases up like two, three percent or something. And it's like, yeah, it's never actually a real reason. People just do it to like feel better about it. Um, <laughs> funny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that sounds fair. Yeah. I mean, that's just my thoughts on the the format. And deck I mean, I'm kind of guilty of it. <laughs> I'm a little bit guilty <laughs> of it. Man, I just don't like drawing that Union Driver, you know? Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, I really can't like, combo with it. Adding two more cards to your deck while maintaining the same amount of breaks isn't going to change the math that much yeah. more of like a you know i i forgot what the bias is called but it's one of it's a confirmation bias <laughs> basically but yeah just, anyways it's, it's just to make yourself feel good at night yeah <laughs> it makes you much. sleep better but yeah i'm not i'm not gonna draw those garnets now <laughs> but anyways that's all we got for this video this is a long time coming video thank you again pack for joining in on this guys Give Pack a sub, check out his channel down in the description. Again, you know, this guy deserves it. This guy's the legend here. So He's a legend in the making. If you watch him now, so that you can be like in the future, yeah, you know, I watched him. <laughs> I watched him climb to the top. This is the time. This is the time for that. Cause uh, you know, back to back tops, man. That's really good. You have a victory, a top eight on the YCS level. That's like that's no easy feat. That's really, really hard. I uh, appreciate it. Appreciate it. And also, um, I think it's also your your tenacity to sit yeah, through those yeah. games in between <laughs> rounds. It's uh, it's something, man. It's, it's, it was a long term. I'll say that for sure. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, but, it's not uh, easy, guys. Like some people just it, give up yeah. halfway. Some people just give up like round five. Ah, I can't stand it anymore. I'm gonna drop. Yeah. And uh, I think the stamina component is definitely tough. But hey, man, like that's that's part of any competitive, uh, any competitive setting. Or require more than just you sitting down and know how to play with all stamina and stuff. But no, I, I appreciate the kind words, Tomba, and uh, hopefully more to come. So, oh. but you know, it starts here. These type of videos. So if you guys are looking to get better and good stuff, like you know, it literally starts here. So all you guys that are watching, you know, already leagues ahead. Trust. Yeah. So. All right. And don't forget to check out packs, especially when if you guys want to know how the best players' minds think. You've got pack. You bring on guests there too to bring out their minds into your video. Yeah. So that's actually yeah. really cool. And uh, if you guys want to get better at the game, then for sure, definitely go check it out. That's all I got for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed, smash that thumbs up button. Thank you for the subscribe. Thank you for watching this video. And hopefully, you do really well in your next event. And uh, maybe you'll see a bit of improvement in your gameplay as well. So that's all I got for yeah. this one. And I Sounds guess I'll good. see you guys in the next one. Thanks, guys. Peace.